Number nine then from the 2017 Mathematics of Mechanics. There's a six mark question. It looks like it's about a variable force. A body of mass 20 kilograms is moving along a rough horizontal surface. So there's friction involved. It says with a speed of 12 meters per second, but that must mean at this particular point because it would be slowing down on a rough surface. As it passes a point P, a force of this is applied where X is the distance measured from that point. Given that the coefficient of friction of that rough surface is 0.25, what's the work done on the body in the first 10 metres? And secondly, what's the speed after travelling 10 metres? Well, again, with these kind of questions, there are two ways. You can use, well, it's like the equations of motion. You can use motion equations or you can use work energy. This seems to be saying do it the work energy way. In other words, find the work done, and then that will give you the difference between the initial and the final energies. Now, work done, just because this force has been applied, it doesn't mean it's doing any work. It's only going to do work if it manages to move it. It doesn't matter how much force you apply. If it's getting held back so it's not moving, that force does no work. It's only the net force that's going to do work. So I'll have to figure out what the friction is. Well, so what are the sum of the forces in the x direction. Well, what you've got is the force that's been applied, taking that as positive, presumably it's coming from behind because it mentioned this is a positive by implication amount, minus the force of friction. Now the force that's been applied is 249 minus 50 root x. The force of friction, of course, will come from the normal reaction. I'm going to be able to just state that in this case. So obviously the normal reaction is going to be mg. So that will be 20 times 9.8, which means that the force of friction is going to be the coefficient of friction, which is 0.25 times that. Now that's just going to be 98. Two times a quarter is a half. A half of 98 49. There's that suspicious 49 there then. That's where it came from. So the force of friction is going to be 49 newtons. That's still not the first mark. You're not going to get the first mark here until you've found this resultant force. So that means it's that minus 49. 49 away from that means you've got 200 minus 50 root x. I'll just put it this way. Newtons. That's where the first mark comes in. Now, if it hadn't guided you along the path of saying, find the work done, at this point you'd have said, that's an unbalanced force. So that force is going to result in an acceleration, which means dividing by that 20, you're going to have an expression for the acceleration. And from the acceleration, you can then find the velocity because of the connection between acceleration and velocity. But it wanted the work done, so I'm not really going to bother with that part just now. There's the resultant force. Right, next part, work done, force times distance. Work done would normally, work done is force times distance. Or if it's a variable force, depending on its position, work done will be the integral of F dS. So that's what it'll be in this case, because it depends on X. So work done is going to be the integral of, we'll just put it down first of all, F dX. So that'll be the integral from Taking the distance from P, that will be zero. It will then go on to 10, it says, work done in the first 10 metres. You could just integrate it without any limits. Get an expression, an expression that's valid for all Xs, but then you'd have a plus C and you'd have to put in the initial values. You only want one specific answer, so put in the limits and get that. From there to there, of 200 minus that, well, I don't want to carry all those numbers with me. It'll take the 50 out and just leave it as 4 minus root x dx. So that's going to be 50 times, now integrate that. That'll go back up to 4x. That's power a half. Integrating it'll go to 3 upon 2. So it'll be divide by 3 upon 2. Dividing by 3 upon 2 is the same as 2 thirds. And x to the 3 upon 2, you can write it that way, or that's the same as x root x from 0 to 10. So that means putting those numbers in, since that's going to be minus 0, 
you've got 40 minus 20, that's the two tens, upon 3, root 10. Now it's just a case of press those buttons and you'll get it. And if you do that, you get 945.907 and so on. So we'll say the work done then is going to be 946 joules. Missed out loads of marks there. First mark was for knowing to integrate this over those limits. Next mark was for actually integrating it. And the final mark was for getting the final result. Part B then, find the speed of the body after travelling 10 metres from P, just for two marks, because you did all the work in part A. Well, since you worked out the work done, the work done is equal to the change in energy, which is purely kinetic in this question. So the 946 will be the difference between the final kinetic energy and the initial kinetic energy. So that'll be a half, the final kinetic energy is a half of 20 times, we'll just call that V squared. The initial kinetic energy is a half of M times 12 squared. Now, that is one of the marks. Next mark's just for finding it, because it's all numbers apart from that V squared. So we've got V squared equals, well, I'm just going to put it down, 946. It'll be plus this though, which is quite easy because half of 20 is 10, so that's plus 1440 divided by, and that'll be 10, and whilst we're at it, why not just put the square root? And popping that in, you get V equals 15.4466 and so on. So we'll just finish that off as 15.4 metres per second for the last mark. Now, this question could also have been done using the equations of motion, not the Stuva, the constant acceleration equations, but using the connection between acceleration and velocity. But it wouldn't have been appropriate because it asked you to work out the work done, and most of the marks were for finding that. However, if the question had just said, here's the situation, what's the velocity after 10 metres, then you could have done this. At this point here, once you'd worked out the resultant force, subtracting friction from this variable force. You've got an equation that involves acceleration. The unbalanced force creates the acceleration. So for that A, divide by 20. So A will be, in terms of X, 20 into that, which is 10. 20 into that is five upon two. Now I'm not gonna bother putting in the marks here because they wouldn't really be appropriate since the question said, find the work done for four. Now, how do you get from acceleration to velocity? Well, you don't use the constant acceleration, Stuva equations. You'll be using the connection between A and V. The acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity, which would be fine if A was in terms of T, but it's not, it's in terms of X. No problem, should go the differentials. You want it in terms of X, so make that DX. Correct it by DX by DT. You should know this one anyway. dx by dt is v, so it's v dv by dx. Didn't really need to put that down, you should know that. It's in terms of x. Right, so rewrite this with velocity. So v dv. v dv is a dx. Which means the integral of this is equal to the integral of that. So what's it in this particular case? Well, you've got two roots. You can either put the expression in and integrate it without limits to get the general formula for x, for the velocity at the distance x, but then there would be a plus c, so you'd have to put in some values. You've got an initial value you can put in. When x is 0, v is 12. Or since you're only going to use this equation once to get one answer, then why not just go straight in with the limits? The velocity starts at 12 and finishes at I don't know what. I shouldn't really use the same letter as these, so I better put something like V10. V dV. The acceleration is integrated from a distance of 0 to 10. And this is what I'm going to integrate. I think I'll take the 5 out of that. So that's 2 minus a half 
root x dx. Well, this side, that'll be a half of v squared. Just take the half out of that. From 12 to the answer I want. And this will be 5 times. That'll go back to 2x. x to the power, a half goes up to 3 upon 2. But just for that one particular one, I quite like just to write x root x, just for that 3 upon 2. But divide by 3 upon 2, which means multiply by 2 thirds, so that means you're left just with a third of that then, from 0 to 10. I think at this point I'll take that half across, so that's going to be 10 times whatever this comes to. And that'll just be the answer you want squared minus the 12 squared. And that'll just be because the 0 is going to make no difference. 20 minus 10 upon 3 for that part, root 10. You're almost there. V10 will be the square root of, take that across. You could take more out of that, but I've fiddled about with it enough. And I'm just going to put it into my calculator anyway because of that root 10. 20 minus 10 upon 3 root 10 plus 144. All that remains is to press the buttons. And when you do that, no surprise, you get the velocity at 10 metres is 15.4463 and so on. So that's 15.4 metres per second. Now I suppose having done that, you could then work backwards and get the answer to part A, but of course you'd have done it the proper way the first time, to get the answer to part A, because you know the initial and final velocities. You know the initial and final kinetic energies. Those are the only energies involved there. So if you wanted, you could work out the work done, because that would be the difference between the two energies, both kinetic, so it'll be a half times 20 of 15.4 squared minus a half of 20, so that's a common factor. So it's a half of 20 times 15.4 squared minus 12 squared. Now, if you did that, you would get 931.6. So you'd say the work done was 932 joules, which of course is quite far off because you've compounded the rounding error by using this figure here. If you wanted the more accurate value, you'd have had to keep the original value the first time you evaluated that velocity, and then just use that with the answer memory in your calculator. So if you do that again, only with this figure replaced by its more accurate value, you would get 945.907 and so on, which is the 946 it should have been.